Um, there's a survey inside your folder where you can uh, fill out and provide us your comments. All right, great. So, um, you guys, I, the slides are available online. There's a lot of information in there. I'm not going to use the slides. I have last few keynotes I've been giving. I find it's much more interactive because I want to make sure I give the most value to you as possible. Um, the screensaver is just some of the shots of the people I've worked with over the last 10 years. I'm going to turn that down now um, so we can talk. So, a couple of things. One, I'm going to give you some concepts that I hope that you will take with you. It's been pretty much shaped my career, um, both as a project manager and also as a brain trainer, and we'll get more of that later. We're gonna actually talk a little bit about the foundational process that's, that's the, the basis for critical thinking, and then we're actually gonna do an exercise. So the exercise that you guys are gonna do in here, the same exercise that I've done with Navy SEALs, professional athletes, business people, um, you're gonna keep it go with you, so it will help you. You'll actually notice the improvements while you're here and you're really to focus and think faster. So a couple of um, concepts that I want you to take with you. First of all, neuroplasticity. <coughs> Anybody not familiar with neuroplasticity at any time? You are, okay, good. Neuroplasticity basically is the incredible capability God gave our brains to change the stimulation. So everything we do over and over again, the more we repeat it, the more the, the ruts form in our brain. So basically neurons that fire together wire together and neurons are always firing. So when you do something over and over again, the reason that comes to have it, the reason to remember it is for neuroplasticity. Now, another concept we use a lot, um, neuroscientists call an unconscious process a zombie system. Why? Zombies, right? They're out to kill you, but you know, they're not thinking about it. That's just what they do. Okay, a zombie system is actually um, a thought process that has become unconscious. A good example is driving a car, right? So the very first time you learn to drive a car, I'm putting my 16-year-old daughter through this right now, so I'm more scared than she is, right? Why? Because it takes all your conscious effort not to kill anybody when you're first learning to drive that two-ton chunk of metal, right? Now you drive a car, you don't even think about it. You can be talking, you can be looking out the window and so forth, right? Same amount of effort, mental effort, but now it's unconscious. So it's become a zombie system. It's the way our brain offloads um, work, basically. The next concept uh, I want you to think about is zombie thinking. Well, zombie thinking is the three different la layers or levels of zombie systems that relate to a computer, right? So. So when we have our computer, we have applications, right? All the stuff we do. You've got you know, your email, you've got your accounting software, you've got your project management software. Those are all applications. And you can upgrade them, right? If you upgrade one of those, it doesn't necessarily impact everything else, right? Because they're very siloed. But that's the interface to our world is the applications. The middle layer is the um, operating system, right? The operating system is what kind of interfaces and makes everything work. And then, of course, the bottom is the processor. Basic in and out, right? That the processor is what controls everything above it. So the three types of zombie systems are the um, uh, procedural level, which correlates to the application on your computer. The procedural level is what the things you do, right? You, you talk to your kids, you manage projects, you drive a car. All those things that you do are procedural zombie systems. And the way that you get better at them is you improve those procedures. Right? You make them better, you repeat them, you become better at those. Athletes, right, throwing a ball. You know, thousands of times they get more accurate. Why? Because at a procedural level, they're getting better. They call it muscle, like, um, call it muscle memory, but it's really the brain that's remembered. The psychological level, is um, of the, of the operating system we call the psychological level, right? How you think about yourself matters. That's why positive self-talk, thinking grow risk, all those things actually work because you are changing your mindset about when like, you're positive. You tell yourself negative self-talk, you're going to think negative, and that kind of filters the way everything works. Okay, but the fastest way to improve the performance of your computer, everything is just upgraded. Right? We love getting a new computer because everything runs faster. So when that processor is faster, uh, everything works better. And that's what we're going to do in your brain today. We are going to improve that we call the foundational zombie system, 
we're going to make it faster and more focused so everything else that you do gets better. Now, I want to talk about a little bit about project management. So I speak to audiences all this. Medical, um, you'll see why later, but medical conferences, brain disorders conferences, business conferences, a lot of sports conferences. I love talking to project managers because that's my guy. You guys are going to understand this better than anybody else that I've ever explained this to. Because what we basically are going to do to make the brain faster is apply project management to the brain. So a little bit of backing up a little bit to, um, to my career. So, as she mentioned, before doing this, for the Marines contract, we could do this. I was a project manager. But very early on, thanks to the best manager I ever worked for, uh, if you had a chance to work for or work with Kathy Scala, she was at Abbott back then, now uh, she's at Baxter. Also introduced me to her sister, who's now my wife, so that was a good time. <laughs> but she was the best project manager to work for. And her whole idea was to make life Right? And that's the same thing with you guys. If you think that project management is something you do at work, and you go home and forget about it, you're missing out on all kinds of great things, right? Project management happens all the time. The key to critical thinking, your guys are critical thinking because you've got to manage projects. Now, what we do, we developed a very simple, PMBOK is great, uh, we developed a very simple, um, universally applicable project manager. You've probably heard this before. It's really basically define design and deliver, right? So, Anytime there's a problem, you gotta define what the problem is, what the, what the requirements are to be successful. You have to design something to follow that, and then you have to actually deliver your design. And what keeps everything on track is change control, right? We developed very, very simple change control. One sheet, this change will or will not affect budget or cost or time by this much, and get someone to sign off. We streamline that process so much, right? Because that's what keeps us on track, is change control. But break it down, think of your next one. That applies to everything. I used to do seminars in, in the loop uh, many years ago um, on life as a project, right? And I would have people come in and bring their problems. And so the problems might be I need to get my kid through college, or I need to buy a new car, or I got to manage my team, right? Whatever it is, you make it a project. Your brain should constantly be thinking always okay, define, design, deliver. What do I need to get done? How am I going to do it? And then deliver it. Change control. If it's not working, get it back on track. So after, so that was Abbott. So one of the things we did there was we built the, the, their first PMO at Abbott. It was very successful until they retired notes, because that's where we kept them a few years ago. Um, went on and started to get a reputation for rescuing troubled projects. So at AM, for example, June Drew, I don't know who there, June was there. I had 20 projects that were out of control. We had to get wrapped up. We wrapped up in three months. Why? We were constantly thinking about things being a project. Probably the largest project I did, if you guys remember Y2K. So I managed the um, Y2K transition for Motorola PCS. So you know, 20 countries, thousands of people. But the only way we got through that was living project management, right? Because as you guys probably know, if there's a disaster, you don't want to be calling the VP or the manager. You want to be calling the lowest tech on your, on your level who knows how to fix the problem, right? So everything we apply to project. I was very happy doing this. I love project management, worked with a lot of big companies, Aon, a lot of Starbucks Oxy work together for Starbucks Oxy. Again, everything had to be a project, right? And, and what kept us on track was our control environment. So that kind of thing kind of permeated everything I did. 2006, my brother came back from Iraq, um, and he said, IEDs are killing us. Now, my brother's one of my heroes. He was a missionary in uh, Zimbabwe for six years, volunteered to go to Iraq during the surge. A lot of respect from came back, IED, those are, we call it some of the roadside bombs, improvised explosive devices. Those are absolutely the worst, they kill most of our guys. Why? Because in a face-on fight, we can build beat anybody. And I've seen some of the awesome destruction that we can send down range. IEDs are very ins insidious, right? So it could be a bomb there, it could look like a garbage can. It could be, there could be a cord over there that's connected to a wireless phone that's you know, a mile away. And when people come close, they blow it up, they have another one next next to it. So when all the guys come, they help these wounded, they blow another one very, very insane. So I started looking into that. What can we do? How possibly can we do this to help you know, people stay alive? Um, so I dug into research um, on IEDs. I just got myself invited to an event out of 29 Palms, California, which is the range's largest training base. They like to do training out there because it's a lot of desert. You can blow a lot of stuff up and not hurt anybody. 
right? So that's a big trade race. But they had this event every year called IEB Industry Day. And the whole purpose was to get any contractor, and the big ones were there, like Boeing and Honeywell, small guys like me, any type of idea that could possibly help defeat the IEB problem, to come and they put us through a long weekend, they scared the crap out of us blowing stuff up, they showed us all the different types of trigger devices and everything. But the thing that struck me, and, and, and the military, the Marines, I mean, they have a process for everything, right? They, so I was not going to be able to help them that way. But what, what really struck me was the guys who were leading us around had all been guys who had survived an IED attack. And the thing that kept coming up in conversation would be, I started to go down this one alley, something told me something was wrong, I went a different way, and the guy behind me got blown up. Why? Why does one guy make a decision with the same training, same environment that the other guy did. If, ever, if any of you have ever read Malcolm Gladwell's book, Blink, he calls this thin slicing, right? How can we make that decision so fast? And so we call that intuition, right? So intuition is processing faster, right? Um, and making a decision and finishing it. So as I was leaving um, the base, I was able to Taking hands with General Doug Stone, who was a base commander, it's kind of this vision that this is the same thing we do for projects we can do for the brain to make it more efficient. I got him to believe in it. He got me my first contract. The first contract um, was basically to develop a mental performance training program to reduce casualties. So, and what I based it on was applying project management to the brain using neuroplasticity as the medium. Right, because if our brain is defining, defining and delivering faster, if we actually change those names, so you'll hear me use that in the exercise to break it down, think it through, and execute. Right? Whatever we're doing, data is constantly coming into our brains. Right? I mean, in fact, we can get data saturation where we're just overwhelmed. Right? But if we can make the thinking process, the zombie system, all that's happening here, our conscious mind is freer to look out, be aware, and make better decisions. So, uh, break it down, data's coming into us, our, our brains, think it through, what are we gonna do with it, and then execute on it, is a critical thinking process, filtering out what's not important. And what keeps it on track, the change control basically for this process, is focus. So if we're focused, we can get more done in less time unconsciously. So I um, was able to talk to General Stone and help me get this contract. Um, so I had to, to embed with the platoon of Marines and try to develop this program. Now the best part of the deal, the only base they could find that could accommodate me happened to be in Hawaii. So I got a little bit <laughs> for three years, which was a phenomenal experience, right? But um, we set this whole thing up. It was overseen by psychologists. We did a control, a, a, a control group, which was a randomly chosen platoon. <coughs> And the trainee group that I want to work with, and I specifically asked for the worst platoon in the battalion because I wanted to try to help these guys. So the battalion, the battalion's about a thousand guys, the platoon's about forty. These guys have lost sixteen cycles, fifteen guys in cycle four, so a lot of post-traumatic stress disorder. They're failing a lot of their um, their requirements to move on. Um, at the, uh, the last final pre-deployment exercise, the twenty-nine bombs. The entire platoon of was wiped out by a handful of old So very, very poor performance. Three guys are trying to get suicide. I think I mentioned that. So really messed up. We met with them, develop exercises, a variation of which we're going to do today, um, and just started getting these guys to these exercises. The exercises are designed to improve executive function. So one of the things that's unique about what we do, and again, project management had to be portable exercises, had to work, had to be non-digital. Digital exercises don't work. You guys are playing lumosity and so forth, you're wasting your time. They're fun. The interface is too shallow to change your brain, right? I mean, it's an analog. We have to engage as many parts of our brain, hands, feet. The more we can engage when we're doing things, the harder the brain has to work and work connections. So that was one of the requirements, right? We put together this project. But it also had to be something that could be done a little bit at a time and had to be very, very powerful in a short amount of time. It's a reason for a lot of time. Research just came out about that time out of MIT um, into what we call fast neuroplasticity. Basically, um, robust stimulation, which is, as I mentioned, as many parts of the brain and body as possible, will create changes in the brain almost instantaneously. We now know it takes about 20 minutes for these changes to solidify. 
but that was huge, right? So the exercises were designed not to target specific parts of the brain, but executive function, the processes involved with executive function, because we had to make decisions faster. So rather than you know trying to assess where the damage is and try to fix stuff, if we give the brain a task to do that's simple, that, re that requires executive function, the brain will rewire itself in order to make that happen. And the cool thing is that the brain will rewire around damage in order to get this done. You'll experience this a little bit. So that was our whole, that was our, that was the, you know, our project was to make that happen. <clears throat> so three months later, these guys were rated as the best platoon battalion. And when they went to the final platoon training in Twenty Nine Palms, the instructor said it was the best performance you'd ever seen. And that included the same ratings that got wiped out the time before. So then it just kind of spread through the military, right? So so um, it's the only program been approved by US Special Operations Command. That's when I trained SEALs and their instructors at Tampa. EOD pilots, um, snipers, uh, marksmanship approved. If you remember, we talked about, right? So when the brain is faster, that prospect, everything is better. Marksmanship is better. Less stress, people make better decisions. Guys tell me to get along with their spouses better. Um, and then we migrated to the civilian sector about uh, seven years ago when military funding got cut. <clears throat> Same thing. So I work with a full spectrum of people, and to date, everyone they follow the program has improved. So that includes professional athletes, the whole team I, I work with just got a great help this last year. Um, the quarterback says it creates flow state. You all want to get in flow, right? We're, we're the zone. And a neuroscientist been helping us says that when you're going to experience this a little bit, we're actually optimizing system one and system two things. So we're actually creating a flow state or getting you into the zone when we make this happen. At the other end of the spectrum, um, I've been fortunate enough to work with people with brain trauma, uh, post traumatic stress disorder, traumatic brain injury, concussion, um, uh, strokes. And my all time favorite man, I just started working with him, a college kid, warm with cerebral palsy. So he, Never been able to use his hands very well. Um, basically, just clubs. He had to open things with his teeth. And one of the signs of cerebral palsy is cognitive decline. So he started doing poorly in school. He wants to be history teacher. Six sessions after I started working with him, um, and I had this uh, video. You um, can use his hands. I mean, it's incredible because we improved the connections between his brain and his hands. He sent me an email. And he says, he said it's great. Now I can open a bottle with a bottle opener and a bag of crackers without crushing them, pretty useful uh, skills for a college kid. Right? <laughs> so now on the weekend, he's opening everybody's beer bottles, right? Because he can do it for the first time in his life. And his grades, he said, another uh, text he sent me, what are you doing in my head? I have a 4.0 average. I've never had more than one game before um, in a semester. So these are the kind of things that can happen when you make your brain faster. Inner City High School I worked at a couple years ago, um, showed the teacher how to do the exercises. Um, their ACT scores are not three so it's amazing what our brains can do if we work it hard enough. And so the, the main thing I want to kind of, kind of segue into the exercise is that you have to always be thinking like a project manager, right? Every person on your team, if Kathy had not invested in me, these Ben wouldn't be able to use his hands, right? She invested in me as my project manager to be the best of them, right? And that's what you guys got to do. People on your team know your responsibility you need to invest in them. You need to get them to get a charging management mindset. You need to apply that to your family. Anything you do, and you'll be amazed at what's going to happen. Okay, so that's kind of the initial talk. We're going to actually do an exercise now. Any questions on what I talked about so far? Oh, thank you. I tell you, it's been quite a journey. It's just that, that was actually in 2007 that. Um, I started working with reading, so it's been a pretty incredible uh, journey of the last 10 years. So this is the next, this is the exercise. And I'll explain uh, why it's the way it is. Um, this is, by the way, as I said, it's the same exercise that um, that I started Navy SEALs with, and I started Ben with. Everybody start with the same uh, exercise. The 
it's interesting. Another thing, um, this morning, the speaker was talking a little about this increasingly uh, amount of information we have to process, right? So actually, the last two project management conferences I spoke at, we actually uh, went through what we call the mental agility training as opposed to critical thinking, but it's the same thing, right? When your brain is faster and more focused, you can handle that information better and faster. And you're going to be better at making better decisions. So, um, so the reason that there are arrows, if you look at this sheet, so um, everybody look, they got arrows on the front. Okay, why an arrow? Remember, we're talking about executive function, which is decision making. So we wanted to find the simplest symbol that would require decision, right? And an arrow is, because if you look at an arrow, you typically define it by what direction it's pointing. We add color, we now have another variable off the same data set. We have color, we have direction. So if I ask you guys, I'll, I'll you just answer all together or whatever, whenever you get the answer. Um, if I ask you what color is the arrow in the upper left hand corner, what would you say? Red. Red. Okay, great. And then what direction is it pointing? Right. 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 Okay, you just passed the first test. You just made two decisions, right? Break it down, think it through and execute. We had to look at the arrow, break down all the information about it, think through what I was asking you, and then execute. And I had you say it out loud because that started to use robust stimulation, right? Because you have to use your eyes, ears, and your mouth out loud. So now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of get a class baseline. What I'm going to ask you to do, the page in front of you, what I'm going to ask you to do all, all together, but at your own pace, right? At your own pace, I want you to read off all the arrows on the page, only the direction of so right, left, down, up is the first four. Just like you're reading a book out loud. So left to right, left to right, left to right, left to right, okay? Uh, if you go a little bit louder, it'll help you tune everybody else out, right? Okay? <laughs> All right, and I'm gonna get a time, I'm gonna see how long it takes the group, just an average, to get through the, um, to get through this. Okay, let me get my timer up here. You, you want us to say all these out loud? Call them out loud, yes. Uh -huh. Just the whole page, just read out the directions, okay? Just for the rest of the So like uh, left, right, down, up would be the first four. Right, left, down, up would be the first four. Yeah. Okay, everybody ready? And go. Perspective dropping back. You know, sometimes we get overwhelmed because we're too much in the details. 
you want your perspective to be back. So the first thing I'm going to do is fold it in half. There's only four, four um, columns of carbon. Yeah, um, hot dogs. Uh, my daughter said. So four, four columns across. And now we're going to start exercising part of executive function. Okay? One very, very important piece is the, the intuition piece, and that's to anticipate that something's going to happen before it happens. We call it cognitive time anticipation or intuition is another word, right? And we can do that by using two different parts of your brain, and your brain has to anticipate that that's coming. So the way we do that is we're going to actually lead off direction, 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 color. Now, for this, I'd like you all to try to stay together. At least stay with your tables, but if everybody can do it together. This is a huge, I mean, you guys are all from different companies, but this is huge for team building, right? Because you have to sync up your processing with everybody else around you. So, go slow. We'll just say, so right, left, down, blue is the first row. Okay, and let's all try to keep together when we do that. Now, here's the thing. If you make a mistake, everybody can make mistakes, don't worry about it. Don't stop, just keep going. Know that if you're making mistakes, you're helping the person next to you, right? So don't worry about mistakes. Everybody ready? And go. Focus on something, your mind will want. 
you give your brain a very simple task, it requires focus, naturally your focus will improve as well. So one of the big things that's going to improve with this is focus. Great for kids with ADHD, people have trouble focusing. This is going to be huge, right? Not because you're telling yourself to focus, you just have to focus to say these silly arrows, and your brain is doing a tremendous amount of work, which makes it stronger. So that's why we keep making it a little bit harder these times, like lifting weights, right? 5, 10, 15, 20. Pretty soon you're lifting a 30 pound weight. I'm not. Maybe you're looking for a kind of weight, but the weight is light, right? Not because the weight, the weight weighs less, but because your muscles are stronger. The same thing we're doing with your brain. When your brain is faster and stronger, stuff that used to be hard becomes easy. Now I want to work on another part of executive function, which is working memory. Holding something in your short-term memory and then executing on it. And the way we do that is very simple. We're just going to translate the colors to fruit. So red becomes apple, yellow, banana. Green is lime, blue is blueberry. So the first row would just be apple, banana, lime, blueberry. Okay, apple, banana, lime, blueberry. All right? So, and this do the whole half page. Oh, by the way, see, if you guys are taking notes, that's fine. What I, I always do if, when we're all done, my information's on this. If you guys just shoot me an email, tell me, tell me what you thought, I will send you the instructions for everything we did today. Okay, and some other resources so you can practice this on your own. Okay, so apple, banana, lime, and blueberry is the first row. All together, you guys did a great job of keeping it together. Everybody ready? And go. Apple, banana, lime, blueberry, lime, apple, lime, lime, blueberry,
anticipation piece. Now, one of the things that you guys may or may not be noticing when we go all the way across, we run direction, direction, direction through, I notice it, you're going to notice it next time, is you're not even thinking about the first three, right? You're focusing on what's coming. And so your regular directions are becoming faster, unconscious. You're not even thinking about it, but you're still making decisions. That's what we want. We want the decision-making process unconscious. So now open the page up all the way. We're going to work on that a little bit. So the same pattern you had with the color of the fruit, we're just going to spread it out a little bit. Okay? So the fourth column by the crease will be the color. And then the last column will be the fruit. And everything else is regular direction. So the new pattern would be direction, 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 color, direction, 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 fruit. Okay, same thing as before, but make a mistake, don't worry about it, just keep going. And if you do get lost, by the way, just look ahead to a row, wait for everybody else to catch up to you, then you can jump back in. Okay, because we also always need a, a, an ability to get back in, in the swing of things if we get knocked off. So just that's your strategy, right? Just go to the next row, wait for everybody else to catch up, and jump right back in. Okay, everybody ready? Direction, 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 color, direction, 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 through. <laughs> ready and go. Right, left, down, blue, up. Now, on the second column and the sixth column, we'll add the compass direction. You just 
All right, so it goes like this. Direction, compass, direction, color, direction, compass, direction, proof. Okay, so I'll say the first row for you. So it's right, west, down, blue, up, east, up, banana. Okay, again, if you make a mistake, don't worry about it. Just jump right into the next one. Okay, go slower. Obviously, it's a little bit harder to so go slower. Can you just say it again? What we're supposed to do? Sure. Can you say the direction, compass, whatever yes. you said? Yes, so direction, compass, direction, color, direction, compass, direction, fruit. Okay, so one way to, someone told me one way they do it is they just think of compass color, compass fruit, and just know that there's a regular direction in between them. So whatever is easier for you, again, if you make a mistake, just jump ahead. Don't, the main thing is never quit. Don't stop. Just get lost, just jump ahead. Okay, don't worry about making mistakes. Okay, baby? Sorry, just say that from my Sure. Right, west, down, blue, up, east, up, banana. Okay. Everybody ready? Right. And go. Right, west, down, blue, up, east, east up, green. Good. Down, east, up, green, west, west, down, 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 Change. Good. Um, 
So, so I'm, 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 I'm rushing a little bit because I'm worried about time. I, there's a couple more exercises I want to get you to before we run out of time. This next one, we're going to go back to what we did in the first place. And I'm going to time you again. So I want you to say just the regular direction, up, down, left, right. We're going to make it a race. Okay, we call this a speed drill. This is why we want it to go fast. Our brains are lazy. We get used to a set process of speed. If we can push our brains faster and our brains get used to going faster, then we can think, we can think faster. As a marksmanship instructor told me once, he said, you know, we can train accuracy and we can train speed, eventually they come together. So by going really fast and also going accurate and hard, eventually they come together and you're going to be thinking faster and more accurate. So when I say go, I want you all to just read off out loud all the regular directions, no color, no fruit, no, no compass. A couple things to keep in mind. One, don't stop at the end of each row because that's going to slow you down. Very short breaths. You can even breathe in if you want to. But the most important thing is not to stop for mistakes. This is huge psychologically as well. How many times you you got your momentum going, your team's going well, someone makes a mistake, you spend so much time analyzing you lose your momentum, right? So you, you will be aware if you make mistakes, but even if you think four, five, six mistakes in a row, just keep going as fast as you can. Okay? Any questions? Like as a table or did you Oh, individually, so, so, yeah, good question. Individually, so this is, and just raise your hand when you're done. Full page. Performance pressure on you, as full fast page. as you can. I'm sorry? The full page. The full page, yep, as fast as you can. Are you ready? Out loud. Out loud, yeah, always out loud. Always out loud. On your mark, get set, go. Right. <laughs> Tap the arrow. 
Everybody ready? And go. All together. All together. All together. So I'm sorry to have time, but if, if anybody wants, I know lunch is next, I don't know if we can do this. There's a really fun way to do this with your feet. Um, if anybody <laughs> wants to stay for five minutes to do that, we can do that right here. Otherwise, because oh, oh, you're going to be hungry, your brain needs a lot of energy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much. <laughs> 